Morning guys, how you all doing? All good, I hope. We're back out this morning. We've just come down to Scrapby. <clears throat> it's about 20 to 6. Never been here before, but it looks good. That's absolutely a fantastic morning. Look at that for sunrise. I'll just switch around. You can walk with me. Come on, let's go. I don't know if you can see me all right. I've just got down to walk up. little sailing boat out there look we've got the wind farm which is down near Caister that way we've got a bit of a steep incline or decline whichever way you're going <laughs> but, uh, let's just hope for a good day eh? well it's not as bad as I was expecting when I'm looking online I was talking about the steps of death or something like that. <laughs> you know, Norfolk people over there exaggerating. It's all flat around here. Anything more than a hill. Oof. It's like Mount Everest. Um. Right, so I'm not sure where to go. Left or right or straight down. Uh, I hope they're not, there's two seals there. Oh, that's not a good sign. It's that seals or something bobbing along on the surface. Oh, one's just gone down, so and they've both just gone down, so they're not balls. <laughs> Okie dokie. Well, just looking at the beach, just want to get there anywhere slightly shingly which looks pretty good in front of me let's just cut straight through and I was expecting this to be a long walk down but two minutes in you there if that Well, I think it's going to be chuck stone and see where it lands, I think. I'm just thinking if it's bank holiday Monday, there's probably going to be a few people out and about today, so. I mean, it looks like a bit of a gully here. I can see where the high tide's going to come to. The top of this shingle here. So I'm just going to stick near the shingle bit. Right. This will do me. Got the little parking bay up there. It's half a dozen slots each side if you get down early. Okay, gonna get the gear out, get ready, and I'll get back to you in a second. Okay guys, five past six, I'm all set up. Nice, quick and easy one this morning. So this left rod, I've got my like, an FA long cast 40 foot uh, beach rod. 
Paul Carbon. Uh, I've got the Shakespeare Salt XT 7000 reel. Uh, I've got a 60 pound ASIO shock leader, 45 pound nine strand. This one's got a pulley rig with a panel and a 3 owner 2 0 mustard Viking. Already cast out. I've got a nice big bit of her in and squid and I've just bound that on. I've got a uh, five ounce gripper on that one. Two about ten inch snoods. Salted log and squid. That's that one ready to go out. And as I say this one, pulley rig, panel hook. Six ounce lead on this one. I've got a great big bit of a uh, crab, worm and squid with a bit of squid head on there. That's ready to go. I'll switch you around. Let's have a cast about. It's um, high tide this morning. I've checked and I've double checked and <laughs> triple checked. I've got it right. It's high tide at half past seven this morning. So we've got an hour and a half of the flood and then we'll be fishing it down all day long. So let's go. Okay, if it's on the flood, I assume it should be uh, flowing or pulling, should I say, left to right, but we'll soon find out. So. I'm just going to put both the rods on the tripod this morning. It looks flat calm. So. I'm going to get the big rod out first. That's that one, we'll see how things hold. I'll probably move the tripod down a bit. There's a seal just popped up. In fact, that's quite a hell of a flow on that actually. Well, I mean, it did give it a hell of a whack and all. Well, that's pulling a fair bit. On the top, that is a hell of a toe this morning. Might have to put that on the tripod, I think. Move it down and move it to the left a bit.
I'm going to have to take the tripod down and sort of try and reposition this because that's gone way to the right. And I did uptide it as well. Alright, let's get this other one cast out. Right, I'll just move the tripod to the left of the big rod and just see how we go. Not gone nowhere as far with that one and it uptided it a little bit more. So that one seems to be alright. I think this is a bit like K stuff <coughs> where the sort of further you go out beyond the point then it really starts to rip. I mean it's very deep. I've noticed the shore just drops off again like North Beach. But they're both out. Let's have a few pulls of the string today, eh? Okay, if it's on the flood, I assume it should be uh, flowing or pulling, should I say, left to right, but we'll soon find out. So. We'll put both the rods on the tripod this morning. It looks flat carb. Yeah. Should we get the big rod out first? that one we'll see how things hold I'll probably move the tripod down a bit there's a seal just popped up that's quite a hell of a flow on that actually. I mean, it did give it a hell of a whack and up let's pull in a fair bit I might have to put that on the truck, that is a hell of a pose for me. Might have to put that on the tripod, I think. and move it to the left of it.
I'm going to have to take the tripod down and sort of try and reposition this because that's gone way to the right. And I did upside it as well. Alright, let's get the other one cast out. Quarter past six, both rods are out, the holding nicely on the bottom, they're not tripping out at all. Five ounces holding on this one nicely. I might try five ounces on that one if I can get away with it. We'll see. But as, if you had a good week, I hope you have. And uh, is anybody else as well out enjoying the bank holiday Monday, long weekend? Unfortunately, I was working all weekend, Saturday, Sunday, so but I've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday off. Car's in for MOT tomorrow. Hopefully get out Wednesday for a few hours. It's, uh, just had a dog come down and pissed on my jacket, that was nice. So, <laughs> probably have to move that. But it's warm enough, we're just hoping this rain stays away. Um, last week it was absolutely sweating, last couple of weeks I was overdressed and I just brought a few jumpers with me today. It's probably sod's law that uh, it's going to piss it down today. So. I'll get wet, but there you go. Okay, it's quarter to seven. I was just thinking, oh, you know what? <clears throat> I'll set up a third rod today. And yesterday I thought, oh, I always carry too much stuff and the box is really heavy before the camera gear and all the rest of it. Stripped it all out. I thought, no, I'll just take the two, two reels, so I won't be setting up a third rod. <laughs> That's sod's law. It's been in my box for about the last year. Three reels, and I thought oh, I never, I very rarely use them these days. But the one day I want to set up a third rod, I can't. There's a lesson learned. I can bring this right hand rod in now, it's starting to bend right to the right. Although I think the tide is starting to slacken off a bit coming up into high tide. But I reckon it's in another 45 minutes, should be high tide. but I don't know if it's going to be as high a tide as yesterday by the look of it, look of it, but I can definitely see there's a shallow bit down there, there's a little bay, and there's a track that runs all the way along here, where it's all soaked and wet, a little gully. But it might be a lower tide than it was yesterday, so we'll probably soon find out. But I'm going to bring this big rod in, and I'm not going to cast it quite as far.
There's a little bit of May rot, but it's manageable at the minute. But, uh, I always put an imp on the bottom of my rigs. And I know this lens got a drop off system, the, the clip impact system. But I just find it always better. The imp seems to work better than the impact system. It's first cast there, put it on the impact system. Sometimes it doesn't deploy, I don't know why. But on the imp, I never have any problems. Now I'm going to get this one cast out. I'm going to go to the left by oh, that big rod because it's going to go a bit further and I expect the tide to swing it round. Starting to swing around again, you see. That's the problem with May Rock. You don't get it all off your line. You can jam your line up and impede the cast. We'll get you in tangles or snap off or whatever. But it's starting to pull around a bit heavier now, so it's normally to that last sort of. 45 minutes of the flood and air, but that's when the tide is the strongest in the middle, it slacks, slackens off a bit. It's starting to pull around quite heavy now, so you should be nearly at the top of the tide. Yeah, I'm going to be using my finger stall today to save my finger with braid and all the rest of it. Just get lacerated up, and I've never had a tangle, but God, God forbid if you ever did get a tangle with braid, 60 pound line flying out on six ounce bed. You're going to know about it, so well, well worth the investment. And while it's in the box, I might as well use it. Use it or lose it. <laughs> Hopefully not. All right, let's hope the fish aren't on a bank holiday Monday as well, eh? Fingers crossed. Too much longer, it's gonna wind, give it five, wind in, especially this big one. See if there's as much weed accumulating or any may rock start to occur. You know, there has been a little bit up and down the coast. In this time of year, unfortunately, state wall fees start all the holiday makers. And Coming down here, about a little jump left on the beach. It's not good. And that must go in the sea as well. I know it's that last year, from this time of year, about the plastic bags and the rest of it floating around. It's a shame. It's quarter to seven. I've just brought this left rod in just to see how things are. The middle snood was. Half the worm has gone, I did have a little rattle, so I've just refreshed that, cast it out again, a little bit further. 
it looks like the tide's slackening a little bit. This one looks like it's starting to swim back to the left now, but it's supposed to be high tide at half seven, so don't know what's going on there. There's a tiny bit of May rock, just a few little clumps, easily manageable at the minute. Just gone seven, let's pull both rods in and recast. It's starting to get a bit of May rock, which is really annoying. That's why I wanted to buy, uh, I've just bought another Shakespeare Salt XT reel, another 7,000. I got a good deal on eBay. Um, I was watching it and then there was 10% off and I put it in my basket and so they gave me another 5% off. So I got another one for about 42.99, I think it was. But I wanted it more for the fact, um, for the spools. Um, so I can fill up another two spools, one with 60 pound braid straight through, straight through to the rig body. And another one I want to do with like 15 pound mono with a tapered shock leader. Which is, uh, would have been really handy for today because 60 pounds straight through rather than spe wasting 10 minutes picking off main rock all the time, you just cut the line at the, at the rig body. When you're in really just nip it, push it all up the line to the knot, snip it, pull it straight off. Um, otherwise, you waste 10 minutes picking the bloody stuff off, it's like hard cotton wool. But the top two, the worms, have gone again. And you just get that. It's what happened at Eccles the other day. And I think they're a little schooly bass. They're just really fast. And then it's gone. Nothing. Um, so I think they're little tiny bass. They rag the bait really quick. And then just, you get one quick, violent, ba bang and then that's it. So I've just put mackerel and squid on all three. And we'll see how this goes, and if not, then I'll put the prawn on, on the bottom. Yeah, at the top of the ramp there is a box, and it says, um, Beach Play Toys, please return, which is really nice. And then you come down, and the amount of bottles and litter, and it's, I've just been clearing up the peg. There's like loads of broken beer bottles, and I've put the little piles down there, and I'll put them in a bag later on and take it all over. Should be on the beach with the kids playing around, isn't it? All broken glass and all the rest of it. Really always irresponsible. But so far, no bites. <laughs> Third time lucky. Will the run continue? I ain't going home. I ain't going home. I'll stay here all night if it takes <laughs> today. I've got no, oh well, the car's in for MOT in the morning. And I'm off Wednesday as well, so I said to my daughter, <coughs> I'll probably be out all day today. Make the most of it. Or a lot, a lot longer than I normally am. I've got nothing to rush back for. But you never know if I sack up with about a couple of dozen fish, I might go home early. <laughs> it's not looking too promising at the minute. You know, I'm not just weighing up the options, you know. I was just thinking earlier on. I know there's Casey down there, there's Casey Point and Braddock Avenue, and there's the beach down there, which is always quite good, which is basically where that wind farm is over there. Pretty much opposite here. But I'm here. No, no, like I said in previous videos, new venue new place today so let's do what we did at Hopton and make a whole day of it. There's no point in flicking about, you know, coming to a new venue and giving it a half past attempt. You might as well give it a whole but your best shot and stay all day and see what happens. And then maybe Wednesday I'll get up to East London I think. 
Okay, it's quarter past seven. It's started to swing right to left now, but the tide's still coming in, so I don't know what all that's about. But what I'm going to do in a minute, I'm going to bring this left rod in, put three different baits on. I'm going to put a whole shell on prawn on the bottom for a bit of squid, a bit of mackerel and squid on the one above the lead, and the top one I'm going to keep worm and see what's going to work. Probably bring this one in in a minute. This is starting to swing left to right, and it's probably going to chip out because I did up cast that to the left. And now it's going to be down tiding. It's quiet in a minute. Quiet. Might as well have a play about and see what's working. Well, nothing's working at the minute. But I guess I could keep telling myself it's not all about catching fish. <laughs> oh, it would be nice. About getting out, enjoying the open space, enjoy the views, relax, unwind, and enjoy the day more than anything else, regardless of whether you catch or not. I mean, what else are you going to be doing on a bank holiday Monday? I do think fish have gone on all day as well. Oh, that we've got a hangover. I think they're having a weekend away down Devon and Cornwall or somewhere if I look at it in a minute. Hope it's not going to get too busy. People walking backwards and forwards, dog walkers, and all the rest of it. A bit of it, something washed up down there, but a hell of a lot of birds. A couple of dozen of them all around something. Sorry, dead in the water. trembles and knocks on this one with the mackerel but what I thought I was doing is while I'm waiting because it's quite uh, quiet at the minute I'm going to bring this big rod in because there's not much occurring I'm going to set up another two up one down rig the one down I've got a whole shell on form with squid the one above Mackerel and squid. 
that's what I've got to double my chances. Some other guys have come up to me on the beach, you get some like city photo, don't you? So, excuse me, chap. What exactly are you fishing for? I was like, because I enjoy it. <laughs> goes, no, I mean, what exactly are you fishing for? What fish are you in here? Jesus, bloody Christ, man. Is there anything that comes along, really? Some people just got no idea, have they? No idea. You've got to laugh. <laughs> I was going to give it five, bring in the big rod, unclip, put this one on, and get it wazzed out. They still get their um, one-off fast knocks and rattles and then they just stop. Really frustrating. Yeah, it's about half eight. Just had a really good bite on the rig I just put out on the prawn. I missed it, god damn it. So I just lashed on another full shell on prawn. And then one above the lead. Put a raw king prawn marinated in uh, Thai chili and garlic. Tip with a bit of squid. This is no ordinary food. This is a Norfolk Fish and Channel food. A la carte. I've got mackerel and squid on the top one. And then get this cast back out. At least it's starting getting a few proper bites now. That's just cast out. What I'm doing every time I cast out, I'm just rotating the rods. This one's obviously drifting down, so put the left one on the right, cast this one up to the left. I'm leaving a bit of a bow in there, I'm not winding down for about 30 seconds just to let a bow form. And it's holding nicely at the minute. I'm optimistic, I'm confident. That's better. I've just moved my box around so I'm not staring into the glint all day. The sun's behind me off my back. Have a clear look at my rod tips. Okay, 
Yeah, it's quarter past nine. Still nothing. A couple of locks and battles, but we missed them. If I don't catch today, I'm going to go away and reassess my life. <laughs> I don't know what the hell's going on at the minute. I'm going to go and find myself the most overstocked carp commercial. Well, the water's black and you can probably literally walk across the water with that many fish and sit there, sit there for a day or two and catch a thousand fish. Get myself a bit of confidence back. I don't know, sea fishing drives me mad. But it's pretty much slack tide at the minute. I don't know what's going on with this. Uh, it should be now. It's on the ebb, going left to right. Uh, sorry, right to left. But it's still ever so slightly going left to right. So I'm not sure what's going on. The sea's definitely retreated about four, four foot. So. It's a beautiful day. It's warm. We're out. I'm not going to say that's all that matters. <laughs> That's a bloody lie, isn't it? No. It's early days. You never know when that tide finally does turn. And starts going right to left, we might get a few. You've got to be optimistic, don't you? Well, otherwise, what's the point of doing it? I don't know what the time is, it must be about half nine, quarter to ten, ten o'clock, I don't know. But it's absolutely shocking at the minute, absolutely shocking. So, there's a bit of a wave, wave line appearing about sort of 30 yards out. So, I'm going to just drop it over the other side. It's obviously a little bit of a sandbank. I thought I had a little play about. I've still got the uh, shell on prawn on the bottom. I put salted lard and squid on the one above the lead and the top one. Mm -hmm. Seven or eight bits of sweet corn, tip with a bit of squid. Let's see. You never know. Okay, let's drop this one short. Out. It's probably a little bit too short for my liking. But we'll see. We'll give it five, ten minutes. If not, I recast it. Another 10, 15 yards. But at the minute, I've got nothing to lose. That's really shocking at the minute. Diabolical. The tide's all over the place. One minute it's swinging left, then it's swinging right, then left, and then, I don't know, it's all over this place. Had a knock on there and the sweet corn. If we do get one, it's all going on with sweet corn. <laughs> the new sea fishing bait. Okay, the next cast, I'm going to have to wade out as far as I can, I think, because 40, 50 yards out, it's up to your ankle, so. It's gone really, really low. That's probably why I'm not getting that thing. 
rugby, you don't know these things if you never fished here before, and it's a learning curve. It's been a big one today. Okay, that's the problem I'm faced with. And you realise it's so shallow, even that dog's right out there, I can see the sandbank. I'm all done, it's back at the car, I'm absolutely sweating, it's one o'clock, as you can see, that tide's gone way out, way out, there's a great big sandbank in front of me, and I gave up after, that's twice, a load of kids coming along, playing in the sand, on the shoreline, tripping my line, so, if they're out further than what I can cast, it's bloody pointless really, absolutely pointless, so it's a shocking day, didn't catch anything, shocking, one or two little knocks, coming up to a high tide and that was about it don't know don't know why i spoke to two three people came down said came down thursday friday there's a bit of surf on well he fished late on 10 o'clock at night to about two in the morning but he said dogfish one after the other but uh definitely a venue to avoid summertime so many people on the beach and especially over low tide looking at the beach now i mean pointless you want to be a couple of hours before the high tide a couple of hours after and that's it unless you're going to walk right down take your shoes and socks off and paddle out over the shingle bar and over the sandbank so anyway that's one scratched off but uh it's definitely not a no-no i mean uh, as i say later on in the year when there's less people around and knowing the tide's better basically so anyway i was gonna say i hope you enjoy the video but <laughs> There wasn't much going on today, I'm afraid. Absolutely, you know, give it all, all tried everything. Going long, medium range, going short. Trying every single bait I had. Cocktail bait, squid, mackerel, herring, prawns, shell on prawns, lugworm, sweet corn. Nothing, you know, uh, absolutely nothing. But anyway, that's the way it goes. All right, tight lines, guys. I'll see you again in another video. All the best.